Charlie X, the next episode in the original series that I watched. Pretty good overall. I really liked the concept of the villain. Um, sort of this character who's out of place, has some powers, doesn't know how to use them, gets upset. Um, basically what George Lucas was trying to do with Anakin Skywalker, except here Star Trek did it so much better. Um, probably going to catch flack from some fanboys about this, but then again I think there's a general hatred towards Anakin Skywalker and uh, Hayden Christensen sort of uh, portrayal, for lack of a better word. Anyway, uh, yeah, Charlie comes on board the Enterprise. He's kind of the last of his race, supposedly. Um, they don't even know that. He's supposedly stranded on a planet all by himself. Comes on board, misunderstanding a lot of social cues, and he starts using these mental powers. Um, makes stuff disappear, people get upset with him, and he makes them disappear. So, yeah, there's kind of a high body count in this episode with him kind of offing some people that get in his way. Uh, this is also the first time I think we've had a real major threat on the show, and um, in, in the concept that it was something that they couldn't handle with brute force. In the last episode, the man trap with the shape-shifting monster... Yeah, they just shot it at the end. Um, yeah, it killed a bunch of people, a bunch of expendable crew members gone, but they just took a phaser and blasted it away. This time around, they couldn't do that. Charlie makes all the phasers disappear. Cool idea. Um, so now everybody has no weapons against this guy who can just look at them and make him disappear. Um, that was really good. It started to get a little overused, though, and... Uh, Kind of felt that's where it began to lack. It was cool to see um, Leonard Nimoy as Mr. Spock really begin to show what he could do with this character. And Shatner, um, I know people love to pick on him for his acting. I really liked it in this. He has a very strong, commanding approach to the way he handles the character, which is, I think, what that character needed. Um, you know... That's obviously why he was a better choice um, than the guy who played Pike in the original episode. Because he just kind of sat there, spouted lines. Yeah, he was good looking, and he was a little heroic. But Kirk kind of takes it into this more like badass area. Um, and it works. I like it. I'm, I'm really liking William Shatner uh, right now. We'll see where it goes from here, because I know people love to pick on him and the over dramatic pausing, almost a, a Christopher Walken thing. Um, anyway, I'm kind of rambling now on that. But yeah, uh, overall, good episode. Not as good as The Man Trap. I would give this... I'll, I'll say three and a half, four stars out of five. A B, an 80%. Uh, somewhere around there. Um, apparently there's also like an unofficial sequel to this episode. I don't know anything about that. Um, so anybody who is watching, who knows a lot more about Star Trek than I do, and you know about this unofficial sequel uh, where there's time travel and uh, it's kind of like the Terminator. Apparently Charlie goes back in time and kills Kirk's mother. Um, so yeah, anybody who has any information on this, please, please pass along to me. I'd be really interested to see this. See, like, is this a pre-James Cameron making Terminator thing? Um, if so, that'd be interesting to find out, like, did Cameron read this? Did he get influenced? Or this, like, a post thing? And, like, hey, remember Terminator? Really cool. Let's take that idea, but let's, let's use that Charlie X guy, um... Anyway, yeah, you know anything about this unofficial sequel that's out there, let me know, and I will see you all next time.